How's it going, my friends? I know that these are interesting times and very scary times for pretty much every person on the planet right now. And I hope you're all taking good care of yourselves. I am all good here in Boulder, Colorado. I'm healthy, hanging out inside my house. Usually on my YouTube channel, I make outdoor adventure videos aimed at inspiring you to get off your couches. Obviously, I can't do that right now, and maybe I'll link some of my favorite adventures below if you're looking for something to watch. But what I can do is I can still make videos, but just from the comfort of my own home. And I was put in touch with a young man who's living in China. Actually, he's from Colorado and he's been living in China for about a year. And he has been on lockdown quarantine for 51 days. So I got in touch with him and I recorded an interview and it's fascinating. And he's been documenting his life on his Instagram channel since day one of this. And I will link that below. Um, and it's, it's fascinating what he's going through. And so I had a little conversation with him and I hope you enjoy it. So talk about this quarantine and the shutdown and how strict is it? Can you leave? How are you getting food? All that good stuff. Yeah, so it all started, I was actually on vacation when China really got hit and they started the quarantines. You were on they vacation started, in China. In China, yeah. I was in Harbin, China to go snowboarding. Um, and I actually never got to go snowboarding because all of the snow places to go snowboarding shut down. Wow. Literally like the day after we arrived in Harbin, all of that shut down. All the restaurants were shutting down. We got kicked out of two bars because they were just like, yo, the government is telling us to shut down. Like, you guys have to leave. And then, you know, it just got to the point where it was like, well, there's nothing to do here. We're, we, we came here to go snowboarding and go on vacation, but that's just obviously not happening anymore. So we bought new tickets to fly home, got home to Yinchuan, um, got like an Uber back. And then that's when we noticed that things were like really getting serious because they had like a DUI checkpoint almost. But it was just to take everyone's temperature and ask them where they had been. They found out that we had been on an airplane and traveling. Once they found out that we weren't coming from Wuhan, then they they were like, they let us go. And so uh, where, and where do you live exactly? How far from Wuhan are you? Yeah, so I'm 1,400 kilometers northeast or northwest of Wuhan. Yeah, it's called Yinchuan. It's the 30th largest city in China. Um, there's, I think, almost 3 million people who live here, and it's just in the middle of the desert, right right south of Inner Mongolia. So you fly back from your vacation, they check your temperature, make sure you're not sick, and then that, is that when it started? Is that when you're on lockdown? Yeah, literally when I got to my apartment, you know, 20 minutes later, that was, that was day one. That was, that was the day that, that I started counting. Well, just got back from the airport. It's five o'clock in the evening right now, and usually my apartment complex is a busy, bustling place with kids. A few days after that, they gave us this little check mark. Yeah, there you go. This is my punch card. This allows me to leave my apartment complex. <laughs> this is just for the security guards to check which day. So this was the month of what, like April or no, uh, February. February. Um, so this is February's, so they check what day that you left and then you couldn't leave for two days after that. And by left, you mean like um, leaving your apartment? No, leaving my apartment complex. Okay. So I could walk around the inside of the complex, but I couldn't leave the gates of the complex. And the thing is with like all Chinese community and apartment complexes is there's usually only like two or three entrances. And what they've done is just closed every one of them except one. And it kind of checkpoints and, and bottlenecks everyone through that one entrance and exit so they know who's leaving and how often and they can take everyone's temperature to because even to come into my apartment complex i had to get my temperature taken every time yeah there's probably 12 14 buildings in this complex um that's a good size you see there's lots of area for the dogs to go run around in the grass and everything you know it's been a roller coaster ride it's some days i just you know it's like it's okay I can do it, I figure out, you know, I have fun things to do, and I entertain myself, uh, and then some mornings I wake up and I'm just like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I don't know. I'm so bored. I, I'm like so over this. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go out. I want to do things. How are you here. dealing mentally? How are you staying positive and keeping a smile on your face? I know you're a Colorado guy and we're all pretty happy people, but there comes a time when uh, it just wears you down. 
Yeah, uh, fortunately, I think it was, I'm just one of those people that it was ingrained in my DNA. You know, I, it's hard not to be like this for me. Um, but, you know, it's just keeping yourself entertained. And, and I kind of set some rules for myself um, in the beginning so I didn't get sucked into the black hole that is the couch. Yeah. Um, so I just make sure that I don't, I don't watch TV or movies unless it's dark. Okay. Um, I found something that I've always wanted to learn, and I started learning it. What's that? Um, uh, I learned the ukulele. Oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I jam on it every day, and I mean, after fifty days of of practice, you get pretty good. <laughs> so I know that you all want to learn something, whether it's painting or drawing or singing or an instrument. So let's go back to like how strict this is, like. Are you, how do you get food? Like you can leave the apartment complex and go to a grocery store. Are people like following you and making sure you're not wandering around? Uh, so yeah, when I leave, it's just kind of on my own discretion, but there's, there's not much to do. All the restaurants are closed. Bars are closed. If you, I'm not much of a shopper, but if you want to go shopping, everything's closed. The only thing that are open are the drug stores and, um, grocery stores. It's a drug store, but I think you, you can't go in. You have to tell them what you want. You're not allowed to go in. They'll go and grab it for you. Yeah, you, you go to the grocery store. They were never empty. They were always fully stocked. We always had toilet paper. <laughs> um, none of the, the, like, produce. There was nothing was ever sold out. Canned goods, nothing was ever sold out. Everything was fully stocked. It was no, there was no panic buying, which was really nice to see. I haven't been through the snack kingdom. Oh, my God. I should just... <laughs> just buy all of these Snickers. I could leave every two days, but that doesn't mean that I was. Um, I would go walk around my apartment complex, but you know, the thing about quarantine is, like everyone's hearing now, social distancing, making sure that you're not around people. <laughs> these guys are out marching around in the sun. How many humans have you interacted in the last 51 days? Three. Three. <laughs> And is that like face to face, like hanging out, talking to somebody? I have a Chinese buddy who owns a bar um, out here, so I I kind of snuck out and met him at his bar because he went to go water his plants. I can't go into their apartment complex; they can't come into my apartment complex. Wow! Can you go to your neighbor's house if you wanted to? Yeah, I could. I have very little minimal Chinese. I have enough Chinese to kind of get me around in a taxi and in a restaurant, and you know, little conversational, but not much. So. I, I, I wave to my neighbors, but it's, you know, they're not inviting me over. I don't know what I would do if I invited them over. <laughs> Going out for, for groceries and it's still dead here. So the Chinese are really good at bootlegging movies. Have you been seeing the best of Hollywood already? You head of the game there? Oh, oh absolutely. I always say it, but God bless uh, Chinese copyright laws. <laughs> I'm seeing it all. I'm seeing it all. No problem. We got a volley going. Oh, spike it. Spike it. Oh. You are allowed to at least, like, if you wanted to go ride a bike or go running or ride your skateboard, you you can do that. It's not like full lockdown. Uh, yeah, you can, but it is not. It's not recommended. They don't want you to. Okay. Um, and the thing is, the Chinese people, like, when the Chinese government says stop, everyone stops. Um, uh, and no, no questions, no problem. It is just like people are very and, obedient you know, for, for better or worse. I, I can't and won't comment on it, but when it comes to like a virus outbreak, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. I say it like if, a, if this is going to happen in any country, China is the best country for it to happen in because it's going to slow down the spread of the disease way more than any other country could. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, in the United States now, you know, there's no cities under full-on lockdown. But it's, you know, half of the country doesn't think this is really a big deal. and They're not taking it seriously. And so they're just going about their normal lives and staying in groups of people and going to restaurants and stuff. And, you know, obviously that's how it spreads. Yeah, and it, it blows my mind that, that people are doing that because, you know, it, I, think, I don't remember if it was Trevor Noah or John Oliver... They had a graph showing, like, you know, what it is is if, if no one quarantines, and then they had a graph of everyone quarantines, and one of them was just a huge spike that came down, and one of them was a very gradual hill, yeah. you know, and it's that gradual hill that's not going to just, like, overload our, our medical 
departments are hospitals and and medical personnel so yeah. i think you know it's it sucks it's boring it's not fun at all um i'd rather be doing a million other things than this but it's just you know it's just for the good of the humanity all right day 41 day 41 it's time to figure it out it's time to figure out what i'm gonna do with my life Oh man. I've seen some of your Instagram videos of like people hosing down benches with some sort of chlorine. Oh well, this stuff has a weird smell to it. I'm not too happy that I'm, I'm walking with these guys doing this. I don't know what it is. Every day, multiple times a day, just in my apartment complex alone. And there must be thousands of apartment complexes. Getting the trash cans and God knows who, what, what else. What advice do you have for us Americans who are quite far behind? And I don't know if we'll ever, we'll ever get to the point where you are, where you're on full on lockdown. But what advice do you have for us? You've been through this. Um, you know, find the fun. You know, there's just after like 30 days, you just find yourself doing like the weirdest things. You know, you're having like weird conversations and you're with yourself and singing silly songs. And That's what we're having for dinner again. Hot pot, baby. Yeah, well, when you're on day 50, you'll be singing and talking to your hot pot too. Yeah, and just don't, don't get sucked into the black hole that is your couch, like... You know, I, I know some people here that I think that's literally just, they just wake up in the morning, sit on the couch and just watch TV and movies all day. Do you think from what you see over there, you, you're watching American news, do you think we're, we're in for it? Do you think it's going to hit us as hard as China? Oh man, I, unfortunately I think it's going to hit, hit the U.S. worse. Um, cause I mean, just, I keep seeing videos of people at like bars and restaurants and you know, I've talked to some people back home and they're just like, I don't, they just have the like, I don't care mentality and it just blows my mind. And, you know, cause they're like, I'm, I'm young. I like, I'm, I can't, you know, for my psyche, for my mental health, I can't just like stay in quarantine. And it just, it like blows my mind that people are like thinking that way. Yeah. It's a pretty so, selfish way to look at it for sure. I don't know. I just saw footage of a beach in Florida like yesterday and the beach was just Jam packed full of people. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Nightfall on Ocean Drive, Miami Beach. Spring breakers from worldwide hitting the hot spots. This after a major day in the water. The worry if anyone is carrying the coronavirus, it might work its way towards Miami Beach's large senior citizen population. Yeah, how many people do they think have it in China still? I mean, are you on your way out of this? So, yeah, so I live in the uh, Ningxia semi-autonomous region, um, and we only, we have less than 80 cases. Okay. Um, and with less than 80 cases, look at the measures that they put in. Um, yeah, this is a know, city of 3 million people, you said. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's a teeny, teeny, tiny little province. It's a Muslim-majority province. Um, so it's a minority-majority area, and, you know, it's kind of... You know, when people, when you tell other people in, in China you're from, from Yinchuan, they're like, oh, do you like ride camels to work? <laughs> it kind of has that, that stigma. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know, it's, we had so few cases and, and I think that we're down to zero active cases in our province. Okay. Um, so I imagine that we're going to start, you know, getting better and better. And every time I leave, every time I leave my apartment complex now, I see more foot traffic. I see more like car traffic. I see life kind of like slowly progressing back to where it was, which is really nice to see. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get freedom? <laughs> I'm going to eat Chinese barbecue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I came here mainly to you have adventures and, and eat food, and I haven't been able to eat Chinese food for 51 days now. Bud, how you doing, bud? Huh? And you know, you said your Chinese isn't great. How are you getting information about like what you can and can't do? Um, so I feel like that kind of should be like the school's responsibility. Yeah. The school has been so bad about giving us any information. And the school is where you work, it. right? You teach young children? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a training school, so it's like an after school and weekends program for the kids. But I'm not getting 
like any information from them at all. Um, I'm getting information from other foreigners that I um, that I'm friends with in the city. I didn't even know about these punch cards until my friend um, uh, she got one and she told me about it. And then like I was like, whoa, weird. We did get one. And then like five days later, they they issued ours. Um, and then I have some Chinese friends that you know they that I talk with every few days, and they kind of feed me some of inf- information. So yeah, yeah, it's bonkers. <laughs> I never really thought, I, you know, the day that I flew out to China, I didn't think in a million years something like this would happen. Yeah, well, it seems like you're staying positive. You're smiling. You're interacting a lot with people on Instagram, which is cool. I've archived everything. I've archived every single day of this happening, so you can actually go back to day one of my my quarantine and and watch you know me progress slowly into insanity oh no oh no grandma grandma don't sit on that bench any bench but that one oh no did you have a beard at the beginning of this oh yeah i always have a beard okay <laughs> Always, always. Nice. Well, if you get enough followers, you can quit your job as a teacher and you, you can become an Instagram model. Boom. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'll try to get the body for it. Yeah, yeah. Start doing those push-ups and sit-ups, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time with, to chat with me. I wish you all the best from a Colorado boy to another Colorado boy. I'm a Bronco fan, and uh, we'll be thinking about you. And, uh, yeah, let us... Uh, let us in on any secrets of the future as the time progresses. I absolutely will. Thank you for uh, getting in contact with me. And um, yeah, I'll keep you keep you in touch on what's going on. What do you think about that? Pretty crazy, huh? And I really appreciate Alexi for taking the time to speak with me. And it seems like what's getting him through this is his attitude. And I think we can all learn from that. You know, trying to stay positive, trying to stay active mentally and physically, trying something new, picking up a new hobby, but really taking this seriously and not going outside all that much and congregating with large groups of people. I think we can definitely go on bike rides and runs and like stay far away from most people, but uh, this is what it's going to take. And uh, if you are bored inside your house, and you want some good stuff to watch, I will link some adventures below of some of my favorites. They're hopefully uplifting and fun and will put a smile on your face. And why don't we end this with one big ole chant. Here we go. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole.